Hello everyone and welcome to today's Sunday lecture. We are going to review information on the flying seed. This is something that Lantas wanted to have done periodically, so we're going to go over some of the information we've had in the past, make sure that everyone remembers how to use the flying seed in various circumstances. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, looking at the list of things that Lantos wants us doing on a daily basis, he, you can tell, wants us using the flying seed at least in the morning and in the evening. Now, it doesn't take a long time. It could be just a few minutes uh, in the morning, a few minutes in the evening, technically about 10 minutes in the morning and uh, 10 minutes in the evening. But this is going to affect the rest of your day. So this is one of those steps that Lantos wanted to make sure that you would do every morning, every evening, every day. Let's go over the flying seed and how you actually use it just briefly. So you have the flying seed, you place it on a level surface in front of you, but that level surface can't be the floor. So it could be a TV tray, a coffee table, a desk, a dining table, or anything else. It could be your bed. Within the flying seed, you will position a chamber of eternal light. That has to be on the same level as the base level of the flying seed itself. So that means that you can't have the flying seed elevated above the level of the chamber of eternal light, and you can't have the chamber of eternal light sitting on a small pedestal within the flying seed. It has to be on the same level as that base level of the spiral of the flying seed. You activate the flying seed by placing the eight-sided pyramid on top of it. Now, this is not the eight-sided pyramid that we have had for nearly two decades. Instead, this is the flying seed, this is the eight-sided pyramid that came with your flying seed. It is the specific flying seed eight-sided pyramid. This eight-sided pyramid, is, if you notice the difference between the two, is shorter than the one that you've had for over a decade. This one is shorter and it is made specifically to have the exact same proportions as the flying seed. It is the capstone of the flying seed. It is the way that you turn the flying seed on and off, activating the energy, deactivating the energy. Now, of course, you will think back many months uh, to some of the base instructions that Lantos gave for when you use the flying seed. One of them he said was, don't turn your back on the flying seed. And this is out of respect. And that should give you an idea of the great energy, the great light that is activated with your flying seed. Because he's not given that instruction to any other tool or to any other technique that we've had. When you activate the flying seed, then you actually use it. How do you use it? You position wheels on the flying seed. Those wheels will correspond to one of the 81 seeds. Each seed is related to one of the wheels. Each wheel is actually related to three seeds. There are 27 wheels, and if you mul multiply that by three, you get 81. So each wheel is related to three separate seeds. When you find out which seed you are supposed to enliven, you will take the wheel that corresponds to that seed, you will place it on that seed using, for example, one of the pipe cleaners that we sent you or one of the little special clasps that attaches the wheel directly on top of that seed. Anything like this will be just fine, but you attach the wheel to the seed in the appropriate location. Then, once you've attached whatever seed, whatever wheels to the seeds that you're going to be enlivening, then you start your technique of the flying seed. That is the creating technique. Remember the creating technique, the three steps, purification of the desire, visualization of the threefold aspect of the source of creation, the blue, pink, and yellow, and then re, uh, reintroducing that purified desire within the warmth within the heart. Those are the three steps of our process of creating. Now, the first step is one that we can skip over very quickly. 
because we don't need to purify the, des the desire. The desire we use when we use the flying seed is the seed phrase for each individual seed that we are enlivening. So the 81st seed has flying seed, therefore intent. That becomes the intent for that particular seed. So we introduce that intent very quickly. We don't need to purify it because it remains those seed words. We, enli uh, we enliven our connection with the source of creation by visualizing the blue, pink, and yellow. That is the three colors of the wheel of hope. Now, when you have sufficiently enlivened that connection with the source of creation, you will feel a warmth within your heart. That feeling is your signal that you have adequately enlivened your connection with the source of creation. But you may already have that sensation of warmth within the heart, especially as you move from one seed to the next. You may maintain that feeling of warmth within the heart. So what do you do? You still use that step. You still introduce the three colors, the blue, pink, and yellow, visualizing it even if only for a second or two. Still go through that step and then bring your attention back onto the warmth within the heart. Once you're at this step, and this will be where you spend the rest of your time, you will enliven that seed phrase. So for example, flying seed, therefore intent. You will introduce that seed phrase within the warmth within your heart. You let the seed phrase go. You continue to focus your attention on the warmth within your heart. You will do this until you get that hint that you should reintroduce the seed phrase. The seed phrase may just come back into your mind or you may just get that feeling. This is how we reintroduce the desire within the warmth within the heart. The desire naturally comes back to us and when it does, we reintroduce it within the warmth within the heart. So you will reintroduce the seed phrase within the warmth within the heart. Then you let the seed phrase go again. You will continue to focus your attention on the warmth within the heart until you reintroduce the seed phrase again. Do this at least three times. Now, once you have enlivened one of the seeds, you can move to the next seed. So for example, Lantos has given us different options for the sets of seeds. In the morning time, we have the sunrise seeds. In the evening time, we have the sunset seeds. The sunrise seeds involve the I am seeds, inception, appellation, and mission, as well as the daily seed. But that doesn't mean that you can only enliven those four seeds. It means that you should enliven at least those four seeds. You may decide to enliven other seeds as well. So how do you decide the other seeds that you want to enliven? You use the moon wings. If you think of something that you want to address in your life, don't just rely on the I am seeds and the daily seed. You are certainly able to use the moon wings. Think of a desire. And remember, this is, these are the instructions for using the moon wings. You introduce the desire within your heart. You let the desire go. You let the moon wings fly. So you let fly the moon wings. You do that four times. Each time you introduce the desire within your heart. And then you let the desire go and you let the moon wings go. Those four throws will yield an answer of a seed. Your handouts will tell you what the seed phrase is and what the wheel is for that seed. So you could just take the wheel, put it on that seed, on the flying seed, and enliven that seed using that for a seed phrase and your process of creating. You could do this after the daily seed. So your morning routine could be the I am seeds plus the daily seed plus another seed that you've decided to enliven. You could do that seed throughout the day, perhaps in the afternoon you decide you want to try finding a seed that would help with a specific relationship or with a specific project at work. 
then you use the moon wings, you find the seed, you use the wheel attached to that seed and use the seed phrase to enliven it and then simply wear that wheel for the rest of the day. This is how you use the flying seed, but you can also use it in other ways. Let's go briefly, however, through the sunrise and sunset seeds, just to make sure you understand that. And then let's talk about some of the other ways that we can use the flying seed. So the sunrise seeds, the inception, appellation, and mission. For all of us, inception and appellation is very simple. We go to the website, we enter our date and location of birth, that gives us the inception seed. We enter our name, that gives us the appellation seed. Mission seed. For those of you who have not attended the teacher training course at the Seed of Eternal Light or at the Eastern Gate, then you find your mission seed every morning by throwing the moon wings using the intent, I am thy instrument. Use that intent all four times that you throw the moon wings. That gives you your mission seed for that day, but it can change from day to day. However, those of you who have found your mission seeds there are three of them that you'll find by attending a course at the Seat of Eternal Light in Hawaii or at the Eastern Gate in Taiwan or at the Western Gate in Los Angeles. And many of you will be attending the course in Los Angeles in just a couple weeks time. When you find your permanent mission seeds, this will give you three seeds and one of them is specifically selected to be used in this mission treatment. So you use the inception, appellation, and mission seeds, and the mission seed will no longer be one that you find each day. You use it every day, the same one that you found at the gate. So that makes it a little bit easier for you. And then for those of you who did find your mission seeds at the gate, there is an added technique that you do, an added step that you take after enlivening the mission seed. Those of you who have gone to the class, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who will be attending the Los Angeles class, you'll be learning this in a couple of weeks. Then you do the daily seed. The daily seed, you go on the website, you find the daily seed. It is whatever seed is active at that moment that you are going to be enlivening it. You do that one for three to five minutes and then you're done with your sunrise seeds. Our sunset seeds. Here, Lantos wants us to use the flying seed to help smooth our path, strengthen positive things that have happened to us, smooth out negative things that have happened to us, strengthen relationships that will help us in our lives, and also strengthen our connection with that fundamental energy of our inception seed. So what we do is we do our seed of action, our seed of relationship, and the seed of inception. For the first two, we throw the moon wings four times for each seed to find out which seed we need to enliven. For the seed of action, we use the intent, I am the way. We do that four times, that gives us our seed of action, and this will strengthen the positive effects of anything good that happened during the day. It will smooth out the negative effects, mitigate the negative effects of anything bad that happened, any bad actions that happened during the course of the day. Then the seed of relationship, we use the intent, I am the song of life, and this will help strengthen our relationships. The inception seed is, of course, your standard inception seed. You do this for three to five minutes for each one for a total of about 10 to 15 minutes each evening before bedtime. So these are the daily techniques that we will be doing with the flying seed. Now, just to refresh your memory on some of the things that we can be doing using the flying seed that you don't have to do every day, but that when things come up, you want to know how to do this. The removal of obstacles. I spoke to you about this back in June, but we haven't really spoken about it since then. So let's briefly review how to use the flying seed to remove obstacles that are in your path. Lantos told Cindy back at the beginning of June, in our study of harmonics, we come to the question of obstacles, obstacles along the path. What do we make of an obstacle that appears along our proper path? How do we handle this encounter? Performance of our IM seeds will be of great assistance daily 
assistance. We will proceed along the path supported by the universal harmonics. Yet, even with the support of these mighty forces, there can be times when our path meets with a block, a block which halts the effortless flow of our present direction. There may be many possible causes for these disruptions of the currents which flow in support of our desires. These disruptions may arise from causes of the past, or they may be the results of other energies and forces. Whenever we encounter these forces which interrupt the flow of support, we will employ the skills. We will call upon the finely tuned skills of perception of our blessed moon wings. Our moon wings are the antenna which pick up the presence of fine energies and the sources of these energies. With the intent for the removal of that obstacle which stands in the path, one lets fly the blessed moon wings. One releases the intent, and with this, one releases the moon wings. The intent flies with the wings. We will locate the realm lord and the three values of spin keys to identify the seed associated with the issue. Once this seed has been identified, we may perform creating, the blessed art of creating, with this seed. We will take the wheel belonging to this seed and place it upon an image of the goal. We will add a beloved pendant of eternal light along with a star cell or super water cell to ignite these energies of transformation and removal of the obstacle. We will leave this wheel positioned on this image for 24 hours. The image may be a visual image or may, it may be a location on a map or it may be a written description of the goal. In all cases, the tools will remain upon the image for 24 hours. One may perform the technique of creating on this seed several times during the day. Like this, we will make use of our blessed treasure trove of knowledge which we have been given. We offer our thanks for this most sublime gift of knowledge, knowledge of the eon of eternal light. Yes, many blessings. So, the steps for the removal of the obstacles. And all of us run into obstacles. Some of us run into a significant obstacle once a month, maybe once a week, maybe daily. But whenever you do run in a, into an obstacle, this is a good technique to know. So as you can see on the screen, we use the intent with the moon wings. The intent is the removal of the obstacle which stands in your path. You find the seed. Then you take the wheel associated with that seed, you attach it to the flying seed, and then you use the creating for that seed. Now your desire for creating is not going to be the removal of the obstacle. Your desire is going to be the seed phrase for that seed. So we use the desire of the removal of the, of the obstacles when we use the moon wings, and that tells us the seed. But then when we, when we do our creating to enliven that seed, we use the seed phrase for that seed as our intent for creating. This will enliven that seed and it will enliven that wheel. We take the wheel off of the flying seed, off of that particular seed. We place it on an image of the goal. So the goal, keep in mind, Lanta said could be a visual image. So it could be a picture of what we want. It could be a location on a map. It could be a written goal, a written description of the goal. Then we place the pendant of eternal light and a super water cell and a super star cell on the image. We leave it there for 24 hours. During that period of time, you can repeat the process of creating for that seed. You can take the wheel, put it on the flying seed, and create for that seed, put it back on the picture, back on the written goal. You can do that as many times as you want during the course of the day. So that is an easy one-day technique for addressing obstacles that are in your path. We have some hurricanes in the Atlantic as well as in the Pacific. So let's review briefly what Lanto said about this. This is much more recent, just within the last month, that we have received this knowledge. And it's important because Lantos made it clear that these 
things are going to happen more frequently now. Why? It's a good thing because it means that the elements are rising up to welcome the new eon of eternal light, to welcome the first rays of the great star of Genesis. And Lanto specifically referred to the elements. He said the element of wind, the element of water, the element of fire, the, the earth itself. So we can anticipate that we will see some of these events. We will see fires, we will see hurricanes, we will see massive flooding, we will see earthquakes. But we don't want to see them damaging things. We don't want to see them harming people. So how do we welcome this aspect of the, the elements of the earth waking up and rising up to welcome the early rays of the great star of Genesis? How do we support this process while helping to ensure that people aren't injured, helping to ensure that property isn't damaged or destroyed? We want the good, but we don't want the bad. So how we do this is by enlivening the eighth seed, the seed of the world mother. Here's what Lanta said about it. It is a great joy to announce the presence of the early rays of the great star of Genesis, the great energies of the mighty star of Genesis, the arrival of the energies of the great star of Genesis, the arrival of the great form of light for earth in our beloved eon of eternal light. Yes, it is a great joy. Our beloved great star of Genesis will ignite the energies of earth within this mighty cosmic realm. Our precious knowledge of the flying seed has opened the gates for the beloved great star of Genesis. Yes, the gates are open. The elements rise up in the presence of the higher energies, the winds, the waves, the earth, the fires. The elements of the unseen all rise in awakening, all respond in purification. The energies emitting from our beloved mighty star may bring disruption at times to the material layers as the light increases. The elements may generate disruption in the process of purification and regeneration. The eighth seed, the eighth star seed, is the precious seed associated with our world mother. As we receive the higher energies, we may bring greater stability through enlivening the eighth seed. Yes, this may soften the nature of this often disruptive process of introduction of higher energies. So Song of the Deep. This is the eighth seed, the song. So what does this mean? It means that when you see on the news a hurricane is approaching the east coast of the United States, which one is? When you see a hurricane approaching Hawaii, when you see a hurricane, uh, which would be a typhoon approaching China or Taiwan, when you see uh, events flooding, when you see forest fires in California or other parts of the country or the world, when you see these events, the, uh, the events that signal the rising up, the awakening of the elements, then simply add the eighth seed to your morning or evening seeds. So just add in that dark blue wheel and use that intent, Song of the Deep, to enliven that eighth seed. Do this whenever you think it's necessary. This is something that we have gone over many times over the years. The idea that biogenesis and the technologies that Lantos has introduced to us are technologies that help make your life better. They help you to deal with your own issues. Those issues could deal with your physical body, they could deal with health, they could deal with emotions, they could deal with relationships, problems in life many different things, but they also are to be used for the world. They're to be used to make the lives better for everyone else on earth also. And this is one of those easy ways that Lantos has given us that will have a significant impact on other people around the world. Okay. That is our review 
of the flying seed for today. I look forward to next Sunday. We should have new information for you. I should be giving you a lecture on Wednesday, an introductory lecture for biogenesis, which means you may not need to watch it, but if you have friends who are interested in biogenesis and don't really know about it, that's why Lantos wants me giving an introductory lecture online on a regular basis. We'll be doing that once or twice every month on the Wednesdays just to help people who have not learned about biogenesis learn more about it. Okay, everyone, thanks so much. Have a wonderful day and a great week.